Hi, this is Arden Kirkland. In this video, I'm going to show you a little bit about how exhibits work in Omeka. I'm going to use three different projects at Vassar College to compare and contrast some different choices made while using the same basic theme. You may have already looked at my more detailed introduction video about For Better and For Worse, an exhibit from 2013. But we'll also look at Fashioning and Education from 2011, and A Glimpse into Vassar's Secret Closet from 2010. All three had faculty, student, and volunteer involvement in both the physical and digital exhibits. Now you'll see, it's pretty obvious as you go through, that they all do have the same basic look and feel, which ties into the look and feel of the rest of the website, where all the items are also shared in an online database. Um, now for the site as a whole, I did use, uh, I started with a theme from another designer, Aaron Bell, who had uh, created this theme called Deco and shared it. But I did end up adapting many different aspects of both the PHP and CSS to really customize how a lot of this appeared. It's a pretty plain and simple design. When you think about using the same exhibit template over and over within one Omeka instance, the challenge is to create a template that works as a shell to be used again and again for very different exhibits. So we're going to start with the oldest one. We're going to take a look at um, A Glimpse into Vassar's Secret Closet. The digital exhibit here was an afterthought. Uh, this was not done at the time of the show. It was done afterwards um, to kind of preserve the work that went into the exhibit, uh, particularly since it was focused on student work, um, wanting to them to be able to show off what they did. It really, you'll see the sections here at the top, it only has a few sections, and the bulk of the site is in this section called Projects. And this is really the exhibit part. And you'll see in the secondary navigation here, the parts with the black background, each of these is an object um, that a student worked on, researching and preserving. So as you click through different ones of these, You'll see a very simple layout with an image from the exhibit, um, some simple text, and it's pretty straightforward. Everything was taken exactly from what was on display in the gallery show. Um, from the introductory parts, these were all on panels on the wall. Um, and in the projects, everything shown here was on a label near the object on display. So pretty simple. But if we go on to the next one for fashioning and education, um, having done the Glimpse digital exhibit, this gave an opportunity to really think of the digital exhibit at the same time that the gallery show was being designed. Um, in fact, this was even a tool, this was used as a digital tool to help visualize the different groupings and think about how things would appear and work together. So it's still mirroring the physical exhibit, uh, but it's including more groupings and, and context. So this one is really showing a very common way of using Omeka for that kind of a mirror. And I'm just going to kind of highlight that here. If you think about that the exhibit is the entire gallery, and then this, this kind of outline format helps you to kind of organize things in different, different levels of the outline hierarchy. So within the exhibit, you have your different sections. And if you're mirroring a physical exhibit, you can think of that as different, different areas, perhaps different rooms or different parts of a room in the case of this show. Then within those sections, you have pages, which can represent individual items on display. 
And then on each page, you have choices of how to arrange different blocks. So you can have images, other, uh, images of the objects, images of other supporting references. You might have blocks for your tombstone label, other interpretive text, any kind of multimedia. You can really throw just about anything into those blocks on those pages. So if we go through here, we'll see some different uses of those blocks. So for example, you can even do more kind of thumbnail grids to see a lot of images at once. In this case, these all link back to the page for each of these photographs in our database with much more information. But this could also be made to link out uh, to an external site. You have lots of choices here. You know, here it's, it's keeping the introductions are pretty short, kind of showing how things are in the section in the room and just a little introduction. But then you might have something that goes into a little more detail. Here's some photographs that were shared from a student's research. And this is a longer page that you're really scrolling down and seeing them all together, grouped together. We can continue again. Remember, you can always, rather than just using the navigation at the top to jump around, you can use the previous and next page navigation to really go through in order. And you'll see that you can include lots of different kinds of materials here. Now back to For Better and For Worse, the most recent of these digital exhibits. And in this page, you can really start to see how it's starting to use a more complex page layout. This was where I needed to really start to um, customize things, move very much outside of how Omeka was structured out of the box. And for each of these individual pages, I created a custom page layout and I just highlighted the different boxes here to show you kind of how each page was, was laid out for different kinds of content to be consistently in the same spot on the page for all the different objects in the exhibit. Now, here we'll take a peek into the administrative view. So here's the back end of how, here you're seeing where all the data was entered um, and the photographs linked and everything. So here you're seeing how this custom page layout is labeled for exactly what should go. You know, so as I'm going through and entering data, I know that this box should include the link to the main image. If I want to do a caption, I can. This box should include text of the label. I can use HTML if I want to make anything link or include anything else there. Here's the box to have the oral history player, so I know that this box will be sized perfectly for that bar, um, and I can put a caption in there. And you get the idea. So there's a place for everything and everything in its place. Here, I've embedded an iframe for the object VR. And there are even a couple extra boxes at the bottom to attach more images um, if an object has a lot to show for that. So you see how this makes it really simple for the person on the back end. So it could, could be a student, um, could be a volunteer with very simple instruction. They know exactly where to put each type of content for a particular exhibit. And multiple page layouts like this can be created. Um, so you can create different kinds of page layouts for different exhibits within the same theme, which is exactly what you're seeing, you know, as we go through 
something like this that is very simple with image and text versus what we had here with our custom grid. While we're talking about the admin stuff, I do just want to show you one more thing from the backside view. Um, I, I want to point out a couple of things. So first of all, these exhibits used an older version of Omeka. They were a few years ago. So don't be alarmed when the current interface looks different, but you'll see that there are still many similarities. And mainly what I want to show you here is you're seeing the page to organize the whole exhibit and you see how things are organized in sections with pages within each section. And as I hover over, you see that it comes up with a little arrow that I can move things around so I can change the order of things. Um, and I can even move them to different sections. So there's a lot of, um, a lot of customization that's, the, you know, that's right there in terms of just how you set up your pages and how you work with them. But the Exhibit Builder features have been improved a lot since, since this version. So you'll see more about that in another video where I show uh, a more current project I'm working on. So to summarize here, even with a very consistent background, consistent navigation, basically a consistent kind of shell in which it all exists, you can still do different kinds of things with how you structure the sections and pages and especially the blocks on a particular page. I will show you more about all that in another video, but for now, here are the links to these three exhibits, and I hope you will explore some more.